Yeah. No, man, it's truly independent. And this actually mm-hmm. goes to something that we talked about a long time ago where it was like, uh, remember we talked about how um, someone told you in the industry, and I've shared this story before, uh, that if you make a movie that's for Latinos, then a lot of the other people, the other races, the the um, you know the whites, the blacks, and they don't watch the Latino films, but Latinos watch everything. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what what do you do with that? So we were we would get we would sit down with distributors, with festivals, with all kinds of people, and we would literally have to like put certain um, monikers in the film so that it would get picked up by a festival, and then after it would get in review. They would be like, no, we're not gonna like we're okay without the film, dude. It was just like over and over and over. What are some of the monikers you have to frame it as? Like, a- well, you know, there's a moniker that a lot of uh, people don't like the Latino putting it Latinx and that kind of stuff. As soon as you put Latinx on it, it got picked up by a bunch of festivals. <laughs> that simple. There's the yeah. there's the economic portion yeah. of signaling mm-hmm. and labeling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's so interesting how it's the same filmmakers of a certain heritage, the same type of content in the film but sometimes you have people in departments mm-hmm. and where they control either yeah. either a gatekeep like okay. yes right. we're, we type we like your submission or when it comes to funding where it's like certain things mm-hmm. for whatever reason yeah, yeah and, and it's it's work. happened to us all like all our career that's what it's been it's like we've done grants for houston we've done things and we do stories about us growing up in Acres Home, and they're like, we would get reviews back that say, "This looks like you're making that you're making fun of the community." And we're like, "We are the community. Like, we grew up in the well, community." We, yeah, I think they know. don't understand that about the like. That's how. Yeah. Talking shit's a love language. Yeah. For yeah. Latino. Yes, <laughs> yeah. we are making fun of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. we're making. And the thing is that, <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah. Like, like we like that. We're like, like we are the culture. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that was a lot of it. Where a lot. We of know y'all call us sellouts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, th- and that's exactly what what it was for a lot of the film festivals. I mean, I pretty much left it to my to the director Chris Rodriguez. I was like, hey man, if you want to push it to film festivals. Go for it. I'm like, but this is not going to yeah. get in film festivals. Who gets into film festivals, could you say? Because I was just having this conversation with a friend, and he, uh-huh. he has some of the best-selling docs in the in the world, and they mm-hmm. don't make it to TIFF, Con. They don't make it to South By even. They don't make it to anything. It depends on the content, man. It's like it's it's one of those things where um, mm-hmm. I, I, I wouldn't know, like, honestly, what gets in there, but I'll tell you that it's a bunch of stuff that I don't watch. Like, that's yeah. literally... Ooh, who, yeah. yeah, right. Who Shots watches? Fired. Yeah. <laughs> Shots fired. I don't. I mean, if you yeah. look at the Academy Award He's like, list, on the dead home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Academy Award list, like I would never watch any of those films. Like just me personally, yeah. you know. But I'm also not someone that I'm just, you know. Uh, like the biggest film that I watched later was Super Mario. Like that was the only thing because it's nostalgic. Yeah. And I took my kid. You know, which was good. I thought. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. You know, it was fun because there's no like crazy bias or like no, all kinds of stuff. Was, it was just like a fun ride the whole way through. Yep. So it was worth watching, you know, but besides that, like I can't watch anything and I imagine that everything has to have some kind of message at this mm-hmm. point, you know, regardless yeah. of what it is, you know, but um, yeah, it's been, it's just message. interesting dealing with, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just yeah. interesting. Just tell a fun that. story. Yeah, you know what they don't want that they, they something else has to. Even no, if it's not it's a, fun, even I, if it's serious, it's gotta have a message. Just a, yeah, I think it's a pre- story. Yeah. It's more of a preachy Without, story, yeah. you know. Like that's yeah. what that's what you're seeing now. It's yeah. like, hey, we're gonna preach to you a certain way, and mm-hmm. it's not doesn't have to be like a Christian thing. It doesn't have right. to be. It could be an LGBT thing. It could be uh, whatever. Like it's just right. they're looking for that next thing that they can kind of preach to you about and. Right. That's whatever that, the that's narrative, that whatever, whatever, yeah, whatever the new that's thing so is. That's so funny. Yeah, it's the that, same that, thing. That, the that's what we've said. noticed, you know. Whoever they might be, we're not saying who they yeah. are. Yeah, <laughs> who yeah. they are. Who know? they are. Yeah. Who are they? You know, Does Kanye know who, know who they are? Maybe they eat yeah, bagels. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they do. Ye might know. <laughs> Ye might know. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ye might know. I don't know. I don't know. Allegedly. I don't know what There's a lot of different factions that everybody sometimes got an agenda. But yeah. That's very interesting. But, but I, when we made that film, like I said, it wasn't for a film festival run. It wasn't like that was I, not the intention. I, I knew for the fact that yeah. it wasn't going to go through film festivals, and that was just because of the kind of content. It was too. We didn't design it as a monolith, you know, like right. where this is what Latinos yeah. are. This is what they do. We're like, oppressed and we're victims. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't. It wasn't made that way. You know, it was made to like be nuanced, and I think that's the the thing where people watch it and they're like. Uh, it doesn't really speak exactly what I wanted to say, so it probably won't work. But I knew that it was a film that our people would like, you know. Like I said, someone like my dad, some like they will watch it and they'll be like, actually, this was it was good. It's not like 
an A plus movie. And that's what I said. I didn't make like a Academy Award winning movie. This is just a marketable movie that I think will be fun for people to watch. Probably hit right that C minus C plus. Hopefully people like it more than that. But um, I'm not I'm not here thinking that my film is the best thing in the world. You know what I'm saying? I, I know. It's good. In fact, yeah, it's, it's good, yeah. you know, we're looking at it right. And we had, man, we had people reach out to us. When Ar- Arcelia Ramirez, she's someone that was like on a bunch of different movies. She got a standing ovation at Cannes. When that happened, um, we started getting hit up by the people that did Ituma Tambien. They did uh, all those old Ineratu and Alfonso Coron films. They picked up our film and they tried pitching it everywhere. And they were like super close to selling the, the film. But same thing, like no one signed. Like it was just like, hey, we got stars. We have uh, Netflix. We have Amazon. We have these people. They're all, and then they're like, hey, let's look for your next quarter. Next quarter. And they just, you know what? We have to do it on our own. And that's what this is. So um, did it go to film festivals? No. Um it could have probably gone to a lot of smaller ones. I'm sure I can go in and 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 shake hands and you know do all do the dance and get it into a film festival. But it just to me it's just not that notoriety isn't worth it for me. Anyways, it's just well, the, the benefit yeah. to it is why why do why does I guess my question is why does someone choose to go the festival right? It's like well, you're trying to sell. Does that help in selling it? If you or? if you're if you're in a bunch of like. Like if you're in the top fifty, um, you know, uh, fifty and below film festivals, like you can get into a bunch of the smaller ones, you know. Um, it doesn't matter at all. Like it literally doesn't doesn't matter. It's you're winning. You had a good time. You have to be in Cannes, TIFF. You have to be in Sundance. You have to. Be, but good luck in Sundance. Good luck in Cannes. Good luck in uh, Venice. Good luck in uh, in Telerud. Right. Like all, all these, you know, all these uh, Tribeca. That's yeah. you know another one like. Those sounds, top ones you, sounds kind of like festivals in, in the comedy industry. Yeah, the, unless you're like headlining the fe- mm-hmm. unless you're like headlining the yeah. festival, mm-hmm. you're you're just going to network and shake hands and take the, oh look take, yeah, I did a show here I did a show yeah here. and it's the same thing I, I mean I've I've heard this about the New York the top sellers uh, you yeah. know the same thing like there's ways that you can technically be at these shows and technically be in these festivals and you can just put that little title and hope that it it earns you more sales. But the best thing about going to like the top tier film festivals is that someone will come in and buy your film. Okay. They'll be like, "Hey, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna buy it for Netflix, you know, 20, 20 mil, or you know." Mm-hmm. But that's literally like hitting the lottery. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, um, you, it's it's not like you almost have to already have all the right pieces connected, and uh, you know, yes. they're they're gonna have the right people so to it's push not like and stuff. Cans or Sundance or Tribeca, or, or yeah, or those. Yeah, those it's not. It's not really worth going unless you're like, um, you know, you're just trying to meet people for your next film. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, for, for the next one you're going to push. But there, you can make money, man. Like what I tell people is like as long as you don't spend, you know, over 100000 150000 like you can probably make money back in your film doing festival runs and doing all that kind of stuff. But if you spend, you know, a million dollars for a no-name person, you know, with nothing like good luck, man. It's, it's, it's hard out there. Have you ever done any film challenges? Uh yeah, like, like forty eight hour days, film. Yeah, no. yeah, I hate I doing them. With an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, no, is that your bag? Well, I I hate doing them. Person, my brother, he you know, whenever he's like, hey man, let's do this forty eight. I'm like, okay man, I'll do it, but we have to do it all in one take. Like, yeah. we're, we're gonna shoot for three hours, edit it, and like do it all, get it done in like three hours instead of taking the whole weekend. So you go map it out with your person. I'll show up. We'll shoot it for three hours. Mm-hmm. Y'all take it, edit it, and submit it. And that's what we've done. Yeah. So we, we too, we, yeah. We got a big seven day one down in Corpus. It's, oh, it's pretty good. And uh, I've never, I've wanted to participate in it, but it's always during the summer when I'm like got family stuff and oh, shows yeah. going on. Because you, when you sign on to do, to act in it, to write or whatever, you're like that whole week. Yeah, you're dedicated to it. Yeah, like, it's hard. They're, they're like living in a house together, like writing this movie and scoring. Like you've got seven, what is it, a seven day film festival? You got. They they uh they give you the yeah, certain yeah. plot points mm-hmm. or a line that you have to have mm-hmm. in it. You gotta so, have a so, pink donut in there somewhere. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And so then you gotta write, you gotta write it, shoot it, edit it, get a get a score for it, all, all within the span of a. Damn, you gotta be Robert week. fucking Rodriguez. Yeah, man. That's, <laughs> yeah, I can't do that no more, man. My brain is too. It's a big. I'm thing. an old People fart now. Hire I'm... Directors, are, they, they'll bring down a director from Austin or whatever to do it. Like it's just, yeah. and it's like these are people like that. 
sell real estate or whatever. It's just, yeah. they're just. But seven days is good, it. man, because there's yeah. some that are 48 hours, Actually, and that to me is. Yeah, that, those are one my brother, you know, we've done. He, he hasn't done any mm-hmm. lately because I convinced him, like, let's try to make money with this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know I it's saw, fun I saw too, one but. Yeah. Back in the day where they all had, they had to be shot with iPhone. Oh yeah, probably yeah. Yeah, we had yeah. ideas of doing film festivals, especially like you know mm-hmm. on on Instagram. Since I I do have a lot of people that follow like dumb stuff that I do, we wanted to do like online film challenges and stuff like that where you know we uh, we, we give out prizes with the sponsors and different people who mm-hmm. like back us or send me stuff like that we can just give that away to some of them. So that might be something we do this year, or we just do like an online film challenge. And <clears> let yeah. me ask you, bro. Um, have, how has the Texas film scene changed since so many people have moved to Austin, like comedians, Joe Rogan, Tom Segura, and just yeah. just people escape, like California refugees, yeah. New York refugees? Well, I don't think in the the Texas one, I think because of the incentives, you have to understand like the film industry is still a super like um, left leaning type of industry. You know, it's unionized. It's it's one of those things where they're trying to find that that money first. So mm-hmm. here, I think in Texas, they raise it to like ninety million or hundred million in incentives. But you're talking about any blockbuster that comes in. Oh, and it's divided between games and and film. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, and that's why a lot of tech companies moved and started their game companies in Austin too. So uh, that's split right between them. So if you do like a blockbuster game, mm-hmm. they're gonna take some of those incentives. So um, you, there's definitely been a growth, and there's de- a couple more um, massive uh, film studios they're building. I think one, they're building one in Bastrop, and 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 those areas like they're building like a massive like eight eight or, mm-hmm. or ten sound massive stage? sound stages. Yeah. And how much are they? Their PA is going to get uh, <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah in that area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, unions, uh, you have to understand. Once you're union, like the the only cool thing about the union stuff is that you can as a producer. Go type in, hey, I'm going to do a tier one union mm-hmm. and I'll get all the rates so I can build my budget like right away as opposed to calling like, hey, bro, can you come down for a hundred bucks? Like mm-hmm. it's completely different. Like everyone's just locked in so you know you can raise the budget, do it right and you can just type it in and boom, you have it and then you go through the list and they send you, hey, here's your PA. I even though PAs technically aren't in the union, but mm-hmm. um, that's what's easy about that. Uh, but here in, in, in Texas... Um, I think it is growing, but uh, it's growing in New Mexico. Uh, Atlanta is still like popping, man. There, it's crazy how uh, I tell people now to leave to Atlanta. Like, go to Atlanta, mm-hmm. and uh, especially if you're trying to do like film, like film production, and not just commercials or mm-hmm. corporate. Then go to Atlanta. There's work there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, New Orleans, uh, New Orleans, and Louisiana, Louisiana looks like it's coming back. Mm-hmm. Mississippi, um, it's a terrible place to be in, but they have great incentives. Um, that, that's what they're shout out to our fans. Mr. Sorry, uh, yeah. everyone in Jackson. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're saying, man. They're saying that it's uh that it's it, it sucks because it's hot and a couple other things, but um, but the good thing is that um, as soon as you're finished the movie, they'll come out and give you that like they'll give you that check like okay, you spent this much, mm-hmm. here's thirty percent back of what you spent. What about Phoenix? Is that still active? Arizona? There? Yeah, they were shooting a lot of TV out there. Yeah, there. Arizona. Yeah, uh, New Mexico was doing well. Um, there's a bunch of places, man, that are. They're still popping, so, and that are growing because of that. Yeah, I'm curious. So I want to get a live consultation from you. All right, so everybody <laughs> listening, this is Inside Baseball. What I would like, and not to put you on the spot. No, you're good. But I would like to, um, that's a plumber. I'm going to call him back. Uh, uh, some splashes of color somewhere, like put a little yeah, yeah, vibe. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, we get a little bit of this red that shines on us, but like just a little bit more hues somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, what can what we do? Think? What can we do? First thing, you're like, get rid of that. <laughs> no, no, this thing is great. <laughs> okay, um, I was gonna say <laughs> that thing is great, but we can get like some tube lights or get some of like uh, other stronger lights for these uh, top lights here, the ceiling ones, mm-hmm. and change those to colors. I'll help you out right there. Um, and you then, said change the colors out on those. These here, okay. Like, these here, I would change all those, but yeah, we'll we'll do something dope. Um, no, this is great. This is actually making it even here. I so, LED. yeah, you saw I put that black lights. around there. I don't know if that's. It's not doing anything right now. Not not much, but okay. it is killing the spill from the from the back over here. Yeah. But overall, no, I think it looks good. A lot of it would be more to like um, keep this and yeah, and change these light those light bulbs out, and that should be it really. Um, unless you want to start putting stands everywhere and stuff. But that's possible. Oh, stands, yeah, yeah. No, we already got enough stands. Oh, you're looking for the built-in. Yeah, it's better to to there. There's some rigs that you can put that just kind of 
lock across the 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 place and then you can just hang some lights over y'all we were talking about that Rob was getting nervous man when you he was like that's weird he he thought you was gonna start critiquing his laptop (laughs) Dale get that shit out of here you can shoot on a phone for all I care who bullshit tripod is that (laughs) Rob's like that's my tripod (laughs) (laughs) these are actually fucking headphones on your head (laughs) he's like like, damn bro Sony that's cute (laughs) Sony cameras are great how dare you I love these cameras this is cool man you can do anything now bro I've got a thing for the commercial stuff we did a Verizon commercial on an iPhone you know they pay him full rates and everything what? But yeah, like we shot it on an iPhone. Did they? They specifically said, "Please shoot this on." Yes. Oh, I'm doing. They're like, we follow you on Instagram, bro. Put all your little <laughs> lenses up. Yeah, they did a national campaign and they did them all on iPhones. Wow. The tool yeah. in the right hands, man. See, it's all. Yeah. It don't matter. No, what was crazy is that I put the iPhone on one of those little gimbals, so I did my mm-hmm. shot like that, and I had my brother working with me. I said, "Okay, now you shoot it without it." What? Which one do you think they used? But without, <laughs> without, yeah, because the stabilization brother. on the new phones are good or what? No, they just wanted it to yeah, look raw, raw yeah, look like oh, someone, cool. someone that didn't know what they're doing. They wanted to look. <laughs> That's yeah. why you had your brother yeah. around. That's why they were like, "Okay, your turn." And he was like, "What?" I'm like, "Just do it." And he was like, "They want that was it." And do. I got paid for it. Yeah, ah, he did too. Like, there it is. He got a little bit because you had the vision, though. There yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you, the intent. You're it's like that, Puff Daddy. That, yeah, you yeah, had yeah. to press no button. Yeah, yeah, no. But you stood a producer, like yeah. Khaled. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, and the, that's the whole thing. Like, my job is to design, right? To yeah. create intent behind the. The camera, and so that helps, you know, with 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 anything we do, and that's where I get hired. For, that was some really. pimp shit. That was some yeah. flyers pimp shit. Bro. Like, <laughs> you know, baby, you know, I ain't really gotta even own a camera, boo boo. You know, my yeah. job is to create the intent behind the lens. Yeah, that's that's what I tell them all the time. <laughs> yeah. so telling a, telling a story with the camera. Yeah, yeah you know, it's just yeah, the man. sauce of the attitude and the energy it. really to come with it. Yeah, like, what? I dig it. Yeah, the yeah the film industry is definitely something that I admire from like afar, like how hard. Like like Ger- like Gerald man, I was a fan yeah. of of his work. So when I did my special, yeah, yeah. Of, like similar to what you were saying, I knew it was just like, hey man, this is what I want. I, I didn't have to go look over his shoulder see if I like the shot. Hey yeah. man, you know you know what looks good. You, yeah man, you mm-hmm. shoot it. I'll do the jokes. You do you yeah. do what you do. And I was like, I look good. You just point that camera. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, that was it. Now when people have good design, like that's that's what's important. So looking at like Gerald or even all like the merch and stuff you make, everything is. Mm-hmm clean it has like it same thing there's intent behind it there's reason why it's positioned a certain way i've had that before i started doing film so mm-hmm. you know which is one of the reasons why i like like all the new houston like swag that's coming out mm-hmm. i don't know who's designing it but man it looks it looks so much better now you know and they're even taking the old logo and putting it making it look even nicer you know what i'm saying there's like a lot of good things that i think you have to think about design which is comes from the latino culture just like yeah. who we are you know we you know, trying to say, man, tattoos yeah. and low riders, bro. That's yeah, well, that, that abuelitas, you know, they're doing the artesanias and, you know, the yeah. little, you know, you look at them, you're like, damn, there's like structure and design to this. Yeah, and the pattern, the, yeah, and we, the, and we, we forget all that, man. We, you yeah. come over here. Oh, there's natural you, talent. Yeah, you forget. I, mean, I got, yeah. I, there's a, there's a dude back in Corpus, man. Like, he started a whole shirt, little shirt line uh, called Corpus Originals. In fact, I wore his shirt on my special. And, so, and, and his, his stuff was popping for a long time, and I got to know him. I was like, man, so so, how long you been in graphic design? He goes, oh man, no, I'm not a graphic. Designer. Yeah, like, I, I, I put just started, the vision behind it. No, he just started messing around with it. He got him <laughs> whatever, some little program, started putting different shapes and stuff yeah. together, and like, oh, that looks dope. Like, and it just felt it, good to him. Put yeah. it on a shirt. That's what felt it is. Good, felt good to him, and and he fucked around and started a, a shirt company. You know what I'm saying? He's never, he's that, never. That's just how you do it. Have that natural talent that I. We need to put that phrase on a shirt. Design. Put the vision behind the intent. Yeah, it's a great shirt. Hey, so let me, man. Let me, this is another free consultation. To shit, make, make it seem <laughs> like it's <laughs> an interview, but it's a free. He's gonna get a bill in the mail. Don't worry. Uh, hypothetically, yeah. if I was a stand-up comedian, and I wanted to start traveling with a, a like maybe an extra person or something to where I'm mic'd up, and I'm assuming I'd want vertical because everything goes vertical anyway, yeah. right? Um, what type of setup would you suggest? Like, all right, man, how your boy just bring this and one of these? I think, man, the right now the easiest ones that I've seen are like the DJI mics and the Rode mics are killer. Like they have I got little, it in my Amazon car. Yeah, they have little packs. You drop them in. They're like anything that's just like push one button and works. That's what you want to do. Um, I've seen people use the Osmos. They're okay. They're like DJ. That's also from DJ. Man, they do everything now. Yeah. Yeah. China, yeah, well, shooting that that's China. Is just something that tracks you. The the DJI is like a little gimbal thing that follows you, which is cool. But it depends. Like 
once again is 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 how you want to look. If you want it to be more raw mm-hmm. and have them like build like a cool handheld rig, like that might work. But honestly, I would go like Sony A7S or A or A6300 or mm-hmm. anything in that realm because you can take good stills and take good uh take amazing video and it's all autofocus. So, so like I guess to give you like something like I guess yeah. something like like the clips that like Andrew Schultz is like putting yeah like yeah. social media to, yeah. to, to, to achieve that type of look and feel yeah what yeah, is yeah. He rolling? what kind of setup yeah. do you think he's would you I don't know what he I don't know what they're running um but I I mean I, I would assume like you can do it with the phone too you know what I'm saying like oh, okay. h- half the stuff that I've seen especially for like on on my end everything we're doing is with the phone like and I do all you know I have we have really expensive cameras you know and we don't use any of that for like all the social media stuff like it just doesn't matter anymore like there's a whole thing where like um, if your audience expects like if you submit and you might know this where we did the the chips and salsa and the puro party were a little chips and salsa was really polished mm-hmm. it was like very very clean um and uh it felt like it was cool because a lot of people got to see um see the way that you uh, like what you do and they got to get all the jokes but there's also some people who are like they're almost like is this too too high end you know what i'm saying mm. and that was the question you know for a lot of the stuff like because um do you, does it have to look polished and do well people all automatically think because you have money or that it looks too nice that they don't want to support you there's like a lot of things like mm-hmm. that and i don't know if that just has to do with our yeah it's a psychological thing that yeah. you have to so but, for me it's always figuring that out it's like what can you what what works best for that that comedian you know what I'm saying? definitely I, I feel like on tiktok it's sometimes like you can't like especially like with, like with skits mm-hmm. it, they can't be overproduced like they mm-hmm. want they want a dude with a with a spatula and a towel on his head that's like, right they don't want you with a costume and all that like they always same thing with that. youtube youtube's yeah. like that too where you know uh, you'll see mr beast content mm-hmm. and it's all like little handy cams and it's like all the same. They have like twenty cameras, but they're not good angles. There is just fast cuts, four or five second cuts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you have to like. For me, I study all that stuff because it's. I like to be at the at the forefront and understand mm-hmm. what we're getting into. Um, but then when we do do polish, like we did a lot of stuff for Samsung. All that stuff was crazy polished, and they didn't get a lot but of. But for like him, use. like he's intentionally not scaling up his production. Talking about I who, mean, Mr. Beast? Mr. Beast. I mean, yeah, he, he's got. The money, right? So it's, it's he well. Knows, they so it's are intentional. I saw that they are scaling up their stuff, but once they get to the point where it's polished, then it's uh, which they're doing VFX and all that. Whoever is helping them on their team is doing the right thing, not changing it because what they currently have is working. Right. And you know, don't don't all of a sudden start shooting in twenty four frames, which mm-hmm. means it, it's more like movie like or theater like. Keep it at sixty frames for YouTube because that's what YouTube like, likes. I mean, I want to speak you on his name, like yeah. send me not, like 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 Ryan. Like, yeah. I felt like Ryan fell off. And Ryan the kid. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Ryan's like, toy like, reviews. Like, like once you got the like the, for me. <laughs> once like, once you, like like man, you in a whole studio, Ryan. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Man, I like I fuck with Ryan when he was still independent. Ryan at the house. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan at the, the office. <laughs> well, that's what happens. With back, all, in the, well, back in the playroom making beats. Most of the you know? YouTubers that you were with five six years ago, they all have a fall off at this point. Yeah, you know, and that's because the content they think that they need it they're trying to get better and better especially like the 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 production ones you know they're trying to get like the highest camera and now they got like a red camera and Mm -hmm. you know they got all this and people are like man you changed bro and you're just like but you're getting better your your pool back there too big yeah yeah yeah, exactly (laughs) yeah got too big so that's that's the whole thing man but man when you made your when you made your first mixtape in your your mama's laundry room that's how i want to know you that's how i want to remember you no uh but like if yeah if you're following someone around i think like an a7s2 or a7s3 they're a little expensive Shit, once you said cell phone and robe mike i'm like i think that's yeah you could do that well even these are zv1s the reason i got these because they're point and shoot no lenses none of the stuff that like you don't want to carry around the extra lenses and what not. And I have I have a little stills camera that's a Fuji X one hundred F. It's a point and shoot too, right? Point and shoot. Yeah. And it has a fixed well, lens. What about yeah. with that? Because sometimes uh, yeah. we're getting real deep on the conversation here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes Welcome we, to the what did he so, say? Sometimes, live sometimes depending on the on the club setup, we yeah. don't always got our pick on the best. Yeah. Like, we're having to put the camera where there's space where it's not going to get bumped into by our waitress. Somebody going to steal it. God damn. When you're performing in Chicago. With with the cell phone, are we able to get a tight enough clear shot? Man, well, that's so content. Uh The thing is, I I talked to the guy that literally saved Willie Nelson's 
career that paid all the back tax and produced all this stuff. What I forgot his name, but really cool guy. And I asked him because at that point it was digital, like digital pedals and amps and stuff versus analog guitar tube amps and all that. And the question was like, you know, what do you care about digital or analog? And he said, man, I would have rather have what happened recorded on the worst type of thing and know that I have it and it exists Mm -hmm. than having the worst piece of crap recorded on the best technology. So I think that's where that answer would be. It's like, as long as you get the audio, Mm -hmm. then you can, you you know, there's ways to blur up the image, do audio caption text. If the joke hits, if it lands, if it works, then use it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't always have to have the crispiest, you know, for lack of you follow what I do, I call everything crispy, and it's you hear that one? making fun of <laughs> stupid, you know. Yeah, stupid, even like, with the AI yeah. st- AI yeah. stuff now, you can really clean up a lot of stuff. And, and, and that's the thing is like you mean uh, clean up the picture? P- no, not even the picture. Like you can use the audio, just clean up the audio. Yeah, find ways. That's the most to, important part. The yeah, audio. exactly. The content, the, the the joke, the story, the the moment. You know, if you're not gonna use it to like, mm-hmm. you know, if you're gonna use it for like a 15 second reel, which you know back in the day it was like everyone gets their 15 minutes of, fr- of fame. Now it's everyone gets their 15 seconds of fame. Like that's literally what you get. So you make those reels, you make, you know, make them small and just make the con the, the, what they call it out in the ad agency world is called snackable. Like you make snackable content. And, uh, do you watch think media? Who? Think Media? No. Oh, that's so funny. They talk about the snackable. They use the, the analogy yeah. of like uh, like a Cinnabon, right? Yeah. So the big Cinnabon is like the like the meal, and then the Cinnaminis are like the snackable stuff, and then yeah. the Cine whatever are like the other pieces. So you have to pick what yeah. element of content you're making. And, the, and that morsels. Morsels. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're making morsels. Yeah. Making morsels, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but pretty much, yeah, I mean, since I do so much work for, for ads and, and, and company, I, I learn all these terms. Yeah. And, and we create it. So now that I'm doing all the promo for Journey and for that stuff, it's like I can create all that, like all in, and like just do it quick. Yeah. And I think that's more how, how to streamline it. Like you create one video and then you find how to take like the best moments. Like that joke hits or that story hits in 15 minutes. Okay, make it hit in three minutes. Yeah. All right, now make it hit in 15 seconds. Yeah. So having the person that can pinpoint that and create that, that's more important than whatever you're shooting on. And uh, so you know, once you have that person, like don't let them go and, and grow with them because mm-hmm. um, you know, doesn't matter the 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 gear, you know, but uh, like I said, cell phone, road mic, like it's work, you know, and it's mm-hmm. been working. And if you want to step it up, mm-hmm. one of those like one, one of these Sony's I think would probably do great. Mm-hmm. The Fuji, the X one hundred F, man, it takes like really good like um stills. No one knows what it is. So mm-hmm. I could walk around in Mexico with it all around my neck. People think it's like a small film camera. No one's gonna try to steal it from you, you know. And uh, I've had it for like seven years and it still shoots great stills. He's like, I've worn it in Harris County. <laughs> Bro, yeah. Everything was fine. I mean, I'm, yeah. <laughs> He's here to tell the story, so that's yeah. good. Yeah. Good old Harris County, bro. Hey, pinche consultation, consultation you know that, con ganas, carnal. Game. <laughs> game. Let me know. the game, man. Everybody yeah. tuning in, watch bro. Watch out for the new clips, man. Coming. Look, now we, now y'all got to promise y'all finna go watch Journey, man. This, this man hey, just guys, gave I'm, y'all I'm, all this game. I'm, 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 I'm going to add the road mic to my, my Amazon shopping cart for free. I got yeah. the DJI one in my cart. The DJI the one. DJI? Yeah, the, the, those are I dope, man. I've something about the charger. You can connect it straight to your phone. It's like, man, there's a lot of cool stuff about that. The technology is... Like I can't even think of of like half the, a lot of the stuff that I, we do. We need more people mm-hmm. to be there. We need someone pulling focus for you. We need mm-hmm. someone that's recording audio, but someone has to hold the boom mic and someone else has. That's like just with those people. I'm like at an extra two thousand a day dealing with those people, and now all the technology has changed to where mm-hmm. you can have that little mm-hmm. bitty mic. Yeah. As long as you get good, you know, usable. What I call usable audio, audio you know, because no. good is subjective in many ways. Those road mic <laughs> navigate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> are they gonna, are they going to pick up the audience? Or, or, That's or, the thing. Or, or are they just going to pick up? Man, maybe the whole front the row. Maybe. No, I don't. I think the, they should work, but the, you dude, the way your laughs hit, it's going to pick up. Oh yeah. yeah. Nah. So for the average comedian, nice. there you go. Somebody that's a white belt, white belt two stripes comedian. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably gonna have something else, right? Uh, yeah, it, man. We all. The other thing we do is we send. Um, mm-hmm. We get a little recorder. And we put it in the back where they're doing the, um, where they're doing the the, the live yeah, feed. Like a little task cam or yeah, a little task something. cam. Plug that into like a, you know, iPhone or whatever. Not an iPhone. Uh, yeah, plug it in from the uh, auxiliary out into it and just let it roll. Man. I, I know what you're saying, Jim, but uh, like even like with me yeah. on my special, we didn't have we you know like I said we learned things. 
we thought the we thought that the the venue had they used to have orchestra mics yeah oh, over oh, the audience yeah yeah so we were, I was like don't worry about micing the and we we'll get it on the board anyway they didn't have that set up anymore we didn't have nothing to mic the no audience no lap tracks and none of that so yeah. so so when we we went back and watched it right we had the camera audio but then we had uh, audio little inside game there we were like watching we're like like why is it why is it so quiet. Like, Man, that shit was loud that night. Like, yeah. Loud. I got two standing ovations, not sucking my own dick, but it, it was yeah, loud yeah. in that motherfucker. And we're like, you can't hear these these laughs. So then we had to like, okay, make the decision. Like, do we take the camera audio and, and mix and it in? Mix it in the best we can. But now it's kind of you know the sound's not as crisp as it could be. Or even so like a dope engineer, a dope engineer that can find that frequency where the crowd's laughter is yeah. bassier probably mm-hmm. they, and amplify that frequency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no, you're good though. I mean, yeah, no, out, no, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm still great. But like I said, little lessons that, that we learned. That's why. I, why well, yeah, know. what you do for that is you set up another mic, you know, mm-hmm. like, a, and you just point it out. Like one of these would be they're super quiet, but if you put like a like one of those uh, boosters on them, mm-hmm. a clean booster, cloud lifter, yeah, a cloud lifter, and mm-hmm. you just turn it and put it towards the crowd, you'll get a nice warm ambient laugh yeah. track. Does it help? I mean, you can do it, that. It lets people know because if not like putting out a stand up clip like. With no with no laughter at, where you can't hear that people are laughing yeah. or not it's like it's like is he is, is he, he bombing yeah is he bombing or like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. he put it out obviously he thinks I it's swear like a to joke. Bomb, man. <laughs> like, I swear they were laughing man yeah. they were laughing <laughs> they were laughing you just can't hear them yeah shit man. I'm thinking like roadcaster might be too much to take like one mic no because the one you're speaking on for the club you can't run it through the air I mean you can it has four auxiliaries out too and there's ways to do it but. Yeah, I think the best thing is to take like a little Zoom recorder yeah. and just plug that out and put it put it in. Or the other thing we've done before is we put that one, it go, the mic goes into that first, and then that one goes out to the speaker. So it's in the middle? Mm-hmm. We've done that before. Like in Waco at the Hippodrome years ago, we put yeah. the Zoom in the room where all the controls were, and I, I put the Zoom on there, so we got your audio directly into the mm-hmm. recorder. Yeah, but he's saying the just mic for the goes... Crowd. Through the Zoom first and Correct. then out of the Zoom into the club. Yeah, you can do that system, too. Yeah. Which I, I didn't even know that was a thing. It's possible. Uh, you can also get a little DI box, split it there first. I mean, there's, man, there's, there's so many there's ways. There's different to do it. ways. Yeah. The yeah, simplest yeah, yeah. way you don't totally. We can work out a solution for you. <laughs> but, don't, but don't call me. I don't do audio. <laughs> Consultation. Do video, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the date one more time Journey, the website where people can go and, a- and support April 30th. Di- April, April 30th, they can support 30th. direct on the website, Correct. which is. Yeah journeythemovie.com uh, Instagram watch journey film um, and then you can also uh, if you wait just give it a little bit um, don't go on that thunder stick or whatever the people are using now uh, mm. just you know watch it on Tubi it should be released hopefully in the summer um, and you can watch it for free on there as well for sure April 30th journeythemovie.com you can support direct man our friend Orlando Briones yeah. filmatic in the house there we go Burr, 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 burr. Yeah. Much love, man. Thank no, you for thank stopping you, bro. by, brother. Appreciate yes, you, man. Hell yeah. Congratulations once again. Thank what did guys. he say? Podcast hit June the button. 16. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Houston, we, we, uh, we Houston Improv. Yeah, we, yeah. No. We talking about? House of Blues. I'm sorry. Damn. See? You know, it's 2023, <laughs> man. We didn't do it this episode. No, you said June 16th, and, yeah, June, and it, it threw me off. Yeah. But we're going to also throw in our ads yeah. for our Tehuacan. Mary's Creek Cattle Company, definitely going to throw in our ads for, for Pie Tequila. Make sure they get their love. But uh, hit that subscribe, hit that like. We'll see you at the House of Blues in Houston, June 16th. Sass.